Good evening, uh, 17th of June here today, it's Thursday evening, that's uh, 8 o'clock, um, beautiful night, it's been another lovely day, it was forecast for a few thunderstorms but they haven't reached this far north uh, at the moment, we'll maybe get them tomorrow. Um, over the last few weeks anyone who follows the channel will see that we've been to visit a few top growers, uh, I've been delighted to go and see them, we've seen some superb produce, some superb ideas. And it's great for these guys to share their wealth of knowledge, uh, let you see into their premises, see how they're doing, how they do things, and the size and everything of the plants at the present moment. I think we all learn a little bit from it, and it's great to see. Uh, the last one was last night at Billy Reed's. Uh, another pleasure, another really nice guy. Uh, everyone that we've been to see has been superb. The gardens have been great, and they've been very helpful. However, um, there's been a few questions on Facebook and I have had a few questions thrown at me over the last week or two. I'm only going to do maybe a 15 to 20 minute video here uh, and I will try and answer the questions as we go. I'll raise the question and show you what we're doing. Uh, I did mention last night that I'm no further forward with planting trenches up. I am a mile behind this year and some of the trenches are not going to get planted. It's no fault of my own. I have been working very hard, um, keeping on trying to keep on top of things. But uh, unforeseen weather in the early stages throughout April and May put the stop on a lot of things which I would usually be completely gone and some of my trenches are still actually full of basket plants and, and the likes. I've got a lot of herbs and things like that. Um, we'll maybe take a little look once I do a little bit of planting. However, after visiting Billy last night, I come home with a, a little bit new enthusiasm. I managed to clear a little bed. Uh, it's a Blanche League bed. I've made uh, well I've done 15 barrels I'll show you the barrel system that I'm on and uh, I've put eight plants in I've kept two to show you uh, these are in three litre pots the Blanche Leaks Pendle Improved to be honest they've been totally burnt in the greenhouse the sun's been savage in the greenhouse temperatures have been up to 104 degrees and they're burnt and they look terrible and I, I had thought to myself oh I'm just going to put them in for stock but to be honest the trenches are here and I may as well use them so I've decided to put at least 10 in. So I've kept two to show you exactly the state of play. These have been bought, brought from the top greenhouse. And if you remember, uh, I let all the early Blanche Leagues go. These are very late set ones. Um, this is a 12 inch collar and they've come up above the collar. So they're already 14 inches. Uh, they're approaching six inches around. They're only in a three litre pot, as you can see. These have just been stood on the bench. Uh, the roots are just through the bottom, but I mean, it's a nice root on them, but the roots will have been burnt. However, we are gonna clean them up. They're a bit of a mess at the moment, as you can see, all the scorch and everything on them. Usually, uh, I wouldn't bother planting these, but never mind. It's just to try and show a few people what can still be done. Right, we'll clean the, the plant up first. First off, before I start planting anything, I always prepare and get ready. Uh, what you need once you've planted Blanche Leaks, obviously um, the, the holes are already prepared. These pots have been put into my barrels. I'll show you further along. I've removed the pots ready just to drop these plants in. Remove this pot and drop the plant in. I have my pipe lagging. This is large pipe lagging. This will go around my plants. This is uh, 16 inches long. And I have my damp course on hand as well. This is 24 inch damp course and it's cut into 18 inch strips. So this will be going on the plants. We remove the original split cane. I also have canes ready just to tie up as we go. Right, we remove this. Underneath that piece of damp course, we have some um, pipe lagging. This is 32 mil, I think. Yeah, and it's only 10, cut to 10 inches long. Keeps the barrels nice and straight, and they don't look very nice there. But once they're cleaned up, they look a totally different leak. Crisp, dry, weeds in the pots. I haven't been in the greenhouse a lot. Um, each night I've gone in just to throw a bit of water at these, just to keep them alive. And that's basically all I've done. Uh, one of the questions which I get asked a lot What can I give my plants to give them a boost? Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't agree with trying to boost plants um, These are only in compost 
Uh, they sat in a mixture of uh, Clover multi-purpose and Clover Johnnyness number two. So there's no ex no additives, no extra fertilizer being added. I have added a little bit extra where I'll cover once they go into these big containers. Right, as we see, it's a, a decent leak. Uh, that'll be approaching six inches around. It's uh, about 16 inches in length. There's a couple of um, flags to remove off, well, not remove, cut back. To get the pot off, there we go. Just drop straight off, and it will literally just drop straight into the hole that I'd already prepared earlier. Right, firm this in nice, just gently, but firm it, make sure it's nice and firm. The little bit of soil that's fallen into the, um, the three litre pot, I'm gonna pour in around the plant. Just put that out the way. I'll get the next one to show you. These are the last two that I'm actually gonna put in. And as you can see, both of them are in a bit of a state. Uh, a few weeds growing in the pot. Total sun scorch. Um, sun, for me, is more stressful than cold. Uh, I don't keep high temperatures in the greenhouse, if anyone's followed through the greenhouse stages. Um, people say you've used grow lights. Yeah, I have got grow lights, and I do use grow lights. Um, but all my plants, everything that I grow uh, from scratch, it does get seven days, 24 hours on the grow light. Once it comes off the grow light, it never goes back on. So these haven't had any extra. They've had seven days in the early stages when they were small infant plants. Same with the onions and leeks along there. I'm gonna show you those in a moment or two. Again, we'll remove the split cane. Take the dam course off. Take the pipe lagging off. Again, needs a good clean up as you can see. It's only, uh, it's not decay, it's just foliage that has uh, finished growing and that needs stripped off. Some of it's dry and crisp, some of it's a little bit sweaty because it's been underneath the, uh, the dam course and the heat in the greenhouse has been quite intense. I'm gonna remove another flag on here. So take it right down to a tight button. Clean the mess up when I'm finished. Right, I'm just going to show people the button on the, the leak. For some people who don't know what a button is, that is the button, and that has to be intact when you show the leak. Not necessarily now, but it is intact, so it's a decent quality leak. That it's nice and straight. Um, it looks a totally different leak than it did five minutes ago. Again, a good route on it. that in remove the remove the small pot remove that bit foliage now basically um we got a bit ready here I'm try and put the camera down a little bit I can just so you can see what I'm doing here right um, I need to go and get a knife and trim the ends off they are still crisp I do have a framework set up ready we do need to untangle the foliage um, I will cut all this burnt foliage off as you can see right we've got 16 inches of uh, pipe lagging I'll clean the plant down to the base This is to keep it nice and straight and to gain length. That's fit perfect on there. So you can see they're already 16 inches in length. Once we have that on, uh, we need a cane in. I already have my wires tied onto the canes. like the thing I haven't got a cable tie I'll just use a small wire for the moment to hold that in place and I'll get a cable tie and fasten that into the wire 
it's on a training wire up above we keep it nice and straight right just place on the top we'll now put the damp course Dump course to hold it in place. Two wires, one top, one bottom, to make sure the plant stays nice and straight. I'm going to remove the from the holster, and I'm going to turn the camera around. Right, that's the one that I've actually just done, uh, and as you can see, uh, it needs tidied up still. I need to remove the foliage. These are ones which we planted a little bit earlier. They don't look bad at all. You can see where I've removed foliage from here. I have stripped foliage off. Um, I need the other side of the cradle. That's the cradle there. Exactly the same as this side. This side's to be put on. It goes up onto my rack here and put it at a different height. So as you can see, that's the 10 of the pendle just being planted out. They'll be giving a good, a good watering. Right, um, before we look at anything else, I'm just going to show you the barrow system. I've got, this is all covered in black and white. It's just last year's black and white. In fact, it's been used for a few years. That's the barrow underneath. It's sat on top of a trench. This trench hasn't been touched at all this year or last year because I grew tomatoes in here. Um, but next year, I'm going to grow leeks properly and I will do the trench and the barrels. Um, there's a drip feed hose here which goes down the barrel and soaks underneath the barrel because these are bottomless barrels and in the barrel is my mix and my pot which I would just remove and drop a leak in if I want to so that's the system uh, what's gone into that barrel uh, is well it's last year's compost and the year before's compost originally it was uh, a bag of John Innes to a bag of um, multi-purpose uh, I, on the first year uh, that I put the barrels in, I would probably have added, if I remember rightly now, I'm going back three years, um, probably a couple of ounces of hoof and horn, one ounce of um, dried blood, that would have been all. Uh, however, this year, what I've done, I've thrown all this soil out, I've put it through uh, my hand mixer, and in there I've put some manure, well rotted manure, which is on the, the bottom down here, as you can see that's gone in and uh, I haven't put a lot I've put about um, six shovelfuls in each barrel and I used Terra Plus which I've mentioned before it's an organic feed that's gone in now what I will do um, tonight as I water these I will give them some bio lift which is a stress reliever and it'll just help them to get settled in and we'll follow these and just see you know where they end up a lot of people would say they'll probably run the seed it's very rare I have anything running a seed unless I actually want it to. Uh, but never mind, we'll take a look at those. Right, as far as boosting plants, people say we boost plants. We don't, at least I don't. Um, these are four inch, one litre square pots, as you can see. And this onion, I think we'll put a tape around it. I think the onion is about 14 and a half inches around. And I swear down, these have not yeah, that's just on 14 inches there and they haven't been fed they've only been watered in the top greenhouse they should have been planted um, six to eight weeks ago definitely and they would have made good onions about 26 28 inches around um, it is a, a good onion um, there's another one exactly the same it's in a small pot as you can see it's just been sat on the bench uh, it's hard keeping the water in so they've burnt and spoiled but never mind, uh, they'll go in for stock. I wouldn't plant onions now, it's far too late. Here we move on to a, a leek, pot leek. This is different to the blanche. That's a five litre pot. And yes, it does want one or two flags removed. Uh, but this has not been fed. And again, I stipulate it hasn't been fed. And people plant leeks in the trench and they say my leeks aren't growing very well. Well, why not? Because 
there we go that's 12 inches and that's that in a five litre pot and i can tell you now that compost will be completely spent there'll be nothing no feed or anything left in that pot so it just shows with good culture and um, keep your plants nice and clean and healthy they will grow uh well again putting it to a bed they would have been probably far too big that's one of the bigger ones i've got to be honest right i'm going to move along now um these were the seedlings which i planted uh Blanchig seedlings there's a few nice ones amongst them as you can see i still have quite a few basket plants sat here but we've got some more seedlings along here but i am going to show you my main Blanchig seedlings which you see me put into pots that's the the beehive the bees are all going to sleep now they're just starting to come in you can see an odd one or two just 10 minutes ago the sun was on there and there was quite a few bees out uh, a few tomatoes this is mazy uh, they're looking pretty good they're in large containers this is the soil that i took out of the holes to plant my leeks actually and as you can see they're growing very well uh, there was a lady on facebook asking about the curling of the top leaf of uh, tomatoes as we can see here these are tightly knit curled in and they look distorted and they look uh, possibly not very good but uh, this is actually growth if the plants are growing very hard your top leaves will always curl up like this the bottom leaves are nice and healthy as you can see right down i need to get in and get weeded there's a few weeds popping up out the soil of the trench but uh, that's a good sign that there's nothing wrong with that at all and they are producing good healthy trusses as we can see so that's mazy there's a few of those now i'm absolutely delighted with these um these are only in 15 liter containers again it's soil removed from the leak trench and um, put up in the here so they're looking pretty good this is all seed and it's all seed from pendle and the only other leak that it could be crossed with would be the gsn which is a pot leak but it's a good quality pot leak so i was looking for it to put a little bit of bulk in uh, retain quality and looking for new blanch leaks because as we all know there's a, a quite a few problems with the current blanch leaks that we have on the go uh pen possibly still being the, the cream of the crop there's one there that's not making the length but it'll make it good and immediate it's quite a heavy one and it's got quite a bit nice style about it but there's quite a few along here as we go along the bulk of them have 18 inch collars on there's a real nice leak now these are about six inches around and they're all about 16 inches to the the button nice and clean and they're looking good there's another one that's uh that was a bigger one that's actually pushing over six inches um, but it's only about 14 inches in length so there's nothing wrong with that and as we can see as we go along these are looking pretty good there's some good leaks in the back here styles looking great now seedlings are difficult to produce um to produce something good and i was very hopeful that i would get one new leak out of this lot to be honest at the moment i would think i'm going to get 10 or 12. having said that it's still early days and anything can go wrong you know they could split they could go soft and spongy um they could throw suckers there's a lot of problems can still occur but you know i am very hopeful and i'll keep my fingers crossed there's a really big one in here um i have 10 inch collars on there it's a superb leak it's a very big one it's uh, about seven and a half around it could make a very very good intermediate it looks very good at the moment again back on the 18 to 20 inch collars and they're looking good it's a beautiful looking leak so we'll watch these uh with great anticipation and hope that something new will come out of them i'm sure the blanchet lads will be keen to see what what we end up with here these were the first ones planted the ones in the trenches should have been better than this but uh they were a bit late in being planted right moving on to some stock plants um i've just been cleaning up the deer and uh the stock as you can see these are pot leaks as we come up that's what we're looking for nice heads on the top and that's all the way along but we're also looking for totally clean plants my plants are sprayed every time the um the main show leaks are sprayed these are also sprayed as you can see i've just loosened all the soil up around them they're all looking very nice and i am pleased with them and we've got a fine crop of heads 
coming along. Everyone's tied in, all sprayed. Some lovely stems on them, some very nice heads on there. This row's all pot leeks. Uh, we get across to the other side, and it's all blanched leeks and also onions. So we'll move around. I still have a few flowers. Um, the bees, as we've looked outside, they are starting to come in and land on the flowers. They're just waiting of the allium heads opening, whether it's leeks or whether it's uh, onions, and we'll see them flooding in onto those. Here's a one I didn't like. Um, this is again as a seedling. It's starting to get this stripe in the foliage. That one will go out. Um, it'll go in the compost heap. More flowers. Right, we'll move around in the onions. I see John Gareth Davies put a post on. It's the first time he's seeding his own onions. And he had a swelling of the stem. Well, that's, that was a big onion last year. And as we see, as we come up, it does swell. All onions do this. Make sure you don't have the tie a bit tight there. And we are just looking for heads which are ready to start popping open. I clean all my onions down to the, um, the main candles, which are basically what we see here. A lot of these are single, but there's quite a few uh, twos, and there are one or two with three in. Uh, I prefer the singles, but uh, there's nothing wrong with twos, and there's certainly nothing wrong with threes. Anything more than three, I possibly wouldn't be bothered to keep the seed from it. I have plenty, and I have plenty of heads, as we can see here. There's the one just starting to open. Still got a little bit sheath on it. And another. Now, these flowers have to open before the bees will be attracted to them. There is one open here. As we can see, there's actually a little pollen on the top of there, and I've seen the bees floating around that today. I need more than one open because I like to get pollination from one head to another. But uh, they're all looking quite good. There's still some good bulbs in there, and I'm very pleased with those. Blanche leaks all the way along, as you can see. Uh, quite a bit of stock there, but they're looking very nice. We'll move up and have a look at the pot leak bed, the virus free. The place is still a bit of a mess. I'm, uh, I'll start tidying up when I finish. Strawberries, I've had pounds and pounds of strawberries off. I took the carrier bag full up of the, off the hanging baskets yesterday and my wife's going to make some jam. Uh, we'll get quite a few jars of jam out of it and the outside beds are just starting to ripen up. Right, uh, we're looking at Cumbrian here. This is all Cumbrian, this bed. The first three are actually very nice leeks. They're Jimmy Dunnett's Cumbrian. As you can see, it's got a very nice stance about it. Slightly pale in colour, but that's a natural thing for the Cumbrian. They're nice and straight barrelled. Uh, just a nice length and they look very good moving around onto the virus free um, quite big at the moment they may be too big but again I can't stop them from growing they haven't been fed um, to disbelief of some people one or two of my pals come and say you're definitely feeding them I'm not a silly lad um, I know that they're on the large side and if I was to feed these now it would be suicidal um, these are certainly 12 inches plus nice stance to them beautiful and clean they get sprayed very regular and as you can see there are some very nice leaks sat here they're not all superb there are one or two which are just a little bit off um, and one or two are actually splitting there's one there and people have said oh they're bursting already well that's one of the smaller ones and it's the small narrow flags on the base that's actually splitting as they get up onto the broader flags up a height uh, they shouldn't do that there's a the one i'm not keen on it's a wedge shape that one will go the journey and they'll be kept and the one next to it actually stored and it's also slightly wedged so again i'll not keep either of those but they're looking good in general. One or two flags to come off them all the way through. But there are some beautiful straight leaks. Uh, beautiful shape. Just shaking up to be a nice length. Uh, smallest in the trench. Uh, round about 11s. So I'm hoping that somewhere along the line we will get some of those. Seedlings. Uh, well, 
all the Blanchick seedlings were scorched in that particular bed when I planted them. But no mind, they are coming now. Um, you can see the new growth popping out. And the potlick seedlings, there's some really growing hard. One or two looking very nice. Um, but the better ones are the ones that I thought about. One of them thrown a double centre and one of them thrown a sucker up. Uh, so never mind, that's something we can't avoid. And uh, we'll just wait and see at the end of the year if we get anything from them. Some nice, huh. I'm down the garden! These are nice lobelia baskets. The dogs have just realised that somebody couldn't see me. I'm just going to put this on hold for a moment. Right, I've moved up the garden past the dog kennels. Uh, this is more stock. These were overwintered. You've seen them on the benches outside. And again, lovely and clean, cleaned off. They're all producing nice heads. Just starting to come up there, as you can see. Lance leaks. Looking good. Moving up the benches. This is uh, Empomia. Or Ipomia. Uh, and also Halicryzum. They're just young plants. They're growing really nicely. That's the green variety. That's the fine leafed dark one. Looking good. And this is possibly the most popular one. It's an unusual plant anyway. And it'll actually go into hang baskets. I'll show you inside in a moment. These are little herb medleys that I do. Uh, just different varieties of herbs all the way through. Dogs are greeting someone. That's a variety, three different varieties of mint in a tub. And again, the medleys of herbs. These have just been planted for a month's time. Still a few strawberries on the bench. More just being planted into different kinds of pots. And as we move up again, herb medleys, spearmint, mint. Looking nice. Chocolate mint. Smells beautiful and it's a nice plant. It produces a good plant. And as we move over, we're into the Moroccan mint. And inside one of the polytunnels. Some nice uh, begonias along the back there. There's not many left. A few of the uh, trailing begonias at the top. These are later set tomatoes. Yeah, I come here. Very nice, they're just in two litre pots. It's unusual to hear an aeroplane, but we've got one going overhead at the moment. Uh, right, we need to drop water in here. This is um, a Mexican pepper, it's for my son in law. Basil, looking very good. Uh, this is um, tomatillos, and this is the purple variety produce very large plants and I hope to get quite a few off. Again, it's mainly for salsas and things. Uh, peppers, looking quite good. There's quite a few peppers starting to show on them. Looking quite good. Uh, and again, some virus free, which I've just put in as stock plants. And they're looking quite good. And again, they're in pots. These were the later ones, smaller ones. Uh, and again, they're about 11 inches around. I just put four onions up into these 20 litre pots. Um, these are about 16 inches around at the moment. There's only four plants, nice high necks on them. New seedling. Cuttings of mint. 400 there. Uh, a few Betty Blacks have gone along. Cucumbers have struggled a bit because they were neglected in the early stage. I've had a couple of cucumbers off this particular plant, it's Louisia. And we see I've got a few there, and that's about the state of play at the present moment. Um, as I say, the onions, John, you've seen them, it's natural for the bull to swell up like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend people starting to throw feed at the leeks to try and push them on in size. They'll get there in the end. Um, make sure you just keep them clean and healthy. Spray regular, water correctly. It's difficult for me to tell you how much water to give them because everybody's soils that a little bit different and the weather conditions are slightly different. That's great, thanks. Uh, we'll see you in a week or two. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.